Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to use the GIMP resynthesizer plugin, more specifically the heel selection tool within that plugin to get rid of objects in an image. This is a tool that's very similar to the Photoshop content aware fill feature and in my opinion it actually works a little bit better than that feature and uh, so here is the photo that I worked on as an example and here is the top layer and if I hide that layer this is what it looked like before. So we had this chicken in here that this guy's throwing up in the air and then here's after. And this literally took me like less than five minutes to do. And uh, so this is a very effective tool and I'm using GIMP 2.10.6, which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course, before we get into all that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here as well as Project Translate. You can watch one of our GIMP playlists, support us on Patreon, or view our poll of the week results, so definitely check those items out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher, which is now a bestseller with over 500 students. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So we're gonna be using that photo of the guy throwing the rooster up in the air, but we're also gonna be using this photo and they're both from Pixabay and I'll include links to both of these in the description of the video. Just click free download, and if you want to follow along, I believe I used the 1280 by 746 version of this. I might have used the 1920. And then just click download right here. And here is the resynthesizer plugin we're going to be using, and you could download it on Mediafire. So I'll just click this download button here, and you should see your download pop up right here. This will be a zip file. Just click on this arrow right here, and then click show in folder. And so here we have our plugin. Right click on this and go to extract all and it's going to ask you where you want to extract the files to and this is just going to be right in my downloads folder so I'll hit extract and here are all your scripts for this plugin and so here is my plugin folder for GIMP and you can see this is where you need to navigate to get to this folder so each of these are different folders you need to enter so we have uh, the C drive and then program files GIMP2, lib which is short for library, GIMP 2.0 and then plugins and so plugins is the last folder and it'll take you here. And then what you need to do is highlight all of these scripts that you want to include in your GIMP. So these are all of the scripts or all the features that come with this plugin. Each one of these is a different Python script which represents a different tool or a different feature. And all you gotta do is click and drag these into this plugin folder. I've already done that. Uh, they're down here at the bottom so I'm not gonna do it again. And then you've also got two other folders here. So one is for Windows 32-bit and the other is for Windows 64-bit. This just depends on which operating system you're using. In my case, I'm using Windows 64. So enter that folder, highlight those two application files, and then drag and drop them into your plugin folder as well, which I've already done here. And so these are both for the resynthesizer tool, which we're not gonna be going over today. And we're really only gonna be going over the heel selection tool today, as that's similar to the content aware fill tool in Photoshop. But I'll have an article up on daviesmediadesign.com on what all of these other tools do within GIMP. So after you've dragged those files into your plugin folder, you're gonna to have to close down GIMP and reopen it, which I've already done. So if I come to filters, enhance, here you'll see the tools that come with it, so heel selection, heel transparency, sharpen by synthesis, and uncrop. And then if I go to map, I've also got resynthesize and style. And again, we're going to go over these in an article on my website, but for today we're just going to go over the heel selection tool. And so I'm going to delete this top layer here, and I'm going to start back with my original image. And I'm going to grab my zoom tool, and I'm going to zoom in here on my rooster. And the way I use this tool is I grab a selection tool. So in this case, I'm gonna grab my free select tool and make sure the mode is set to either replace the current selection or add to the current selection. And then I'm going to loosely outline the object I want to erase in my photo. So in this case, the rooster. And I do wanna leave a little bit of room around the actual object itself, just so the heel selection tool can pull pixels uh, from the surrounding area and sort of blend those pixels in with this border that's going on around the object. So I close that loop right there using my free select tool. I'm gonna to hit the enter key. And so now this object has been selected. And now I'm gonna use my heel select tool. So I'm gonna to go to filters, enhance, heel selection. And we're gonna get this Python foo script dialog box here for the heel selection tool. And so the first line is context sampling width. And this is in pixels. 
And what this does is it's basically allowing you to choose how far outside of the selection area here, the selection area of course denoted by these marching ants. So how far beyond this line right here, the content selection tool is choosing pixels to fill in within the selection area. So basically right now it's set to 50 pixels, so it's gonna grab pixels from about right here and it's going to use those pixels to determine what should be inside this area. And so basically it's trying to form continuity here between the object that this is blocking. So it's trying to fill in the pixels and guess what's gonna come next here. So you can make this larger or smaller if you want. I'm gonna keep it at 50 for now. And then sample from is where you're grabbing those pixels from. So right now it's set to all around, which means it's gonna grab pixels from around the entire selection area we drew. You could change this to side so it only grabs from the left and right side. Or you could change this to above and below so it'll only grab pixels from the top and the bottom. I'm gonna keep this set to all around. And then the filling order just determines in what order those pixels are filling in the selection area. Right now it's set to random, which means it's just gonna randomly fill pixels in. Inwards towards the center means it's gonna start at the top or it's gonna start at the selection line here and it's gonna move inwards. And then there's also outwards from the center, which means it'll start from the center and move towards the selection line. So I'm just gonna choose random and I'll click okay. And now our object has completely disappeared and I'll hit Control Shift A to select none. And for the most part, it's really hard to tell that there was an object here, but what we can do is grab our heal tool and hit Control to grab a source area. And then you could just heal the lines right here where you could see sort of a seam and uh, just go around anywhere. And I'll hit Control again and just sort of heal that area to try to minimize any seams. And then if I grab my zoom tool and zoom out, you can see this didn't do a perfect job. So let me just increase the heal tool brush, hold control and just work on further healing that. And I'll just zoom out a bit more. And so now it's really hard to tell there was an object there and you guys can work on this a little bit more using the heal tool or using the clone tool. But I'm gonna show you another example here with this light post here. And so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll zoom in a little bit and let me just zoom out a little bit more there. Grab my free select tool. And what I need to do is outline this object again. So I'll just go ahead and outline this. And then I can release and I just need a straight line here so I can just drag this straight line all the way towards the bottom. Loop around here. Drag this all the way until we're connected there. So we have another closed loop. I'll hit the enter key. And now I'll go to filters, enhance, heal selection. And we have the same options here and I'll click OK. And now that object has been erased. I'll grab my zoom tool and just zoom in a little bit here. There's a little bit of a color here that was used to sort of, uh, if I hit control Z, emulate the light that was shining from this lamp post. So I can either grab my free select tool again, make sure the mode is set to add to current selection and just add any parts of that light inside of the selection area and hit enter and then just run that again. So filters, enhance, heal selection and click OK. Select none. So there's still some pixels here on the outside. Uh, the other option is to just grab the heal tool, hold control, choose a source and just try to paint away any of that glow that's showing up from where the light used to be. And I'll grab my zoom tool, hold control and zoom out. And so now you can see it looks like there was never any lamppost there and it's completely erased that with a really minimal displacement of any of the pixels here despite this being a pretty complicated background. So as you can see, this plugin is super effective and I've seen some people say that they're not sure whether or not it works with GIMP 2.10. Again, this is GIMP 2.10.6 I was using and this plugin works fine for me in this version of GIMP. And so I think it really rivals that content aware fill tool found in Photoshop. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at DaviesMediaDesign.com and you can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.